show you guys how I made this Earth Nihilus mask, complete with this hood. And to make this, I had uh, a little bit of ingenuity. I ended up making this with a screen face mask, just because I don't like face paint, and I didn't want to make something that was going to be, you know, uh, super constrictive and claustrophobic that I could breathe in and talk easily. And this turned out pretty good. And some of the materials that I used that you're going to need for this are something to draw with, like a Sharpie, some 5mm EVA foam and 3mm EVA foam. You're going to need a costume mask, which is what this started out as. And you're also going to need a dowel rod or something to put up here to make this part of the hood. And I also used Placid Dip spray paint, some acrylic craft paints, uh, reds, some gold here, champagne gold actually. And use some black lacquer to spray paint all of this here. And for the cloth, I used just some cheap craft fabric for this part because it's pretty stiff. You can fold it and hold its shape. And the rest of this is pleather that I actually had left over from a Batman costume. Okay. All right, so let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing for the Darth Nihilus mask tutorial is, you can see here, I just got a plastic mask. And I just cut it out to the shape that I wanted. And first I drew it out with, rather crudely, with a pen till I got it about where I wanted it. And then just went ahead and cut it out. Now, the mask I got is pretty flimsy. So I've been gradually piecing EVA foam on the back of it. If you happen to get a mask that's actually a thicker plastic and sturdy enough, you're not going to need to do this. And truth be told, I could have made this out of EVA foam, but I really didn't want to. Uh, it's honestly easier just to cut up the mask. You have a nice consistent face shape. Okay, so that's part one. Okay, so here it is after I've attached a ton of little scrap pieces of EVA foam since it's such a thin, flimsy mask. And if you have a thin one like this, you're going to want to pat it. Part of the reason I did all these little pieces, I didn't want to put a flat piece that's going to flatten out any of the definition from the cheeks, etc. I did not use hot glue or super glue, I used contact cement. And the reason for this is super glue causes a chemical reaction, and that chemical reaction will sometimes heat up and it may warp the plastic. And super glue is definitely going to melt it, or uh, sorry, hot glue is definitely going to melt this plastic. So that's why I use the contact cement. So, yeah, that's the first part of your face shell for the Darth Nihilus mask. And if you would like to avoid having to go through and pad this, you can always use a hockey mask, like a Halloween hockey mask, or just a thicker one. Just keep in mind that I cut this with scissors. And, you know, if I have a hockey mask or something thicker like that, you're probably going to need a Dremel or some kind of saw to cut that all out. All right, so now this is getting sturdy. The next thing I'm going to do is make the under mask. Now, you could just do black face paint and put mesh here and put a hood on it. And you're kind of done, you know, once you do the rest of the decoration on this. But every time I play the video game or just my own vision of the character Darth Nihilus, I always like to think of it more as almost more spirit than flesh. I don't really want my, any of my actual face showing. So what I did was I took an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper and I literally stuck it up to my face and drew out the line of my jaw. And then from there I folded it in half and that was the basis for my pattern for the bottom part of the under mask. And here you can see this is what it looks like. Now I'm doing it on black EVA foam. I try to use colored stuff, but since so much of this mask is black, uh, I'm just cutting it out of the black. And to give you a quick reference of what I mean, the way this is going to work is this is going to be covering your jaw. And this is this bottom piece here is going to be your jaw line. Your jaw is basically going to be under here. And 
once you heat this and form it to your face and do the top part, this is going to glue on it. There's going to be mesh covering up your face. So you can still breathe, but you're not going to be able to see it. Here you can see I've been using a heat gun to heat and mold this into the shape of my jawline. And next, I'm going to draw out and cut a pattern that is going to touch to the top part here. And once I can get the top part done, I'm going to attach the understructure and get ready to position and attach this eventually. But for a while, these are still going to be two pieces. Because I'm going to go ahead and go through and finish doing some of the detail work and decoration on this. And then I'm going to plastic dip it. And this is going to have a mesh covering and all this other stuff. And this is actually going to be attached last. Okay, so now that I've already started to heat and form my bottom part of the mask, which of course is going to fit where the chin is here. And this piece comes fairly high up the side of my head, pretty much up to my temples. So I just kind of guesstimated where it stopped and took another piece of paper and just kind of stuck it on my forehead and roughly drew out. And you'll notice these two V's here. And what these V's are going to do is help to give this a rounded shape. And to get that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some contact cement here and I'm going to apply it to both sides, let it sit for 15 minutes, stick it together. All right, now that I have taken my foam piece and glued it together, I've started to use the heat gun and shape it. And this will be the top of your head, and this will be going down to where your forehead is. And essentially how all this is going to work, just to give you another bit of reference. Okay, this is going to be for your forehead. Okay, this will be your jaw and the side of your head. And there's going to be a mesh that goes through the center of the two. And on top of that is going to be your main nihilus mask. Now you're going to notice that on this one here, it's kind of an aggressive spot here. And the way my head is shaped, my forehead isn't shaped like this. It actually comes down here. A part of the reason why the space is here, as you'll notice on the top of Nihilus, uh, Darth Nihilus's mask and, and uh, hood, the top part of the hood is very squared off. I'm actually going to put a dowel rod T piece here and it's going to have the cloth attached to it to give it that shape. Alright, I got the top and bottom piece glued together and you'll notice I overlapped the top onto the bottom and the reason for that is I have to now put in the side support pieces. These are not only going to help this keep its shape but it's also going to provide the point where I anchor the mask to because it's going to sit about there. So I need something coming off the sides here to actually attach the mask to. And for all that good stuff, I'm just going to just eyeball and cut out a piece of EVA foam that's going to go from here to here. Like I say, that'll help hold the mask in its shape and give it a little bit of rigidity. All right, next I've taken and made the side pieces. And how I came up with the shape for this was I just literally took a rectangular piece of foam and I just started trimming away at it until I got the shape I wanted. And then I flipped it over and traced it on another piece. And you can see here on this one, I've already started to heat it and shape it. And the way it's going to attach is going to be here like this. But before... I glue this on, I'm actually going to heat these and stretch these out. It'll look like this. It will come down to a sharp point so that when you glue it on, it's going to come in more seamless and you can just kind of sand that smooth. And you can see on this one I did not do it. It's just five millimeters thick all the way through. But yeah, you want to heat this tip and stretch and pull it out. Wear gloves because it will get hot. And yeah, it'll look like that. Right, I've glued on the side pieces using contact cement. And I've also cut a notch here. I'm going to glue this together to give it a little bit more shape and to help hold it in place, fit my head properly. And the final thing I'm going to do is 
cut a strip about this wide of EVA foam. I'm going to hold it to my face and measure because it's going to go through, across, and over the bridge of my nose. That way this has something in the center to attach to. And we're going to end up putting it on here. Okay, so I've taken the piece here. I cut a piece not quite an inch wide and measured it and heated it and formed it with my hands so that it has the shape of the bridge of my nose. And that's going to go in the center here. Basically so that the mask is going to set over it like that whenever we put them all together. Alright, so I glued in the center piece and then I saved the nose from the original mask here that I cut out. And this is going to help act as a guide because next, next I'm going to stretch this stuff called tulle. It's a type of craft fabric. It's usually pretty inexpensive. I just happen to have it lying around. Uh, if you happen to have something else, uh, pantyhose, anything really, any sort of sheer fabric, you could use that instead. I'm just going to use this. And to attach it, I'm going to use some Super 77. And since this stuff is pretty thin, I'm going to do a couple layers of it. Okay. This stuff here has some pretty bad fumes, so I took this out to the garage. And I'm going to spray it out here. In order to use it, you don't want to put on too much. It gets a little gunked up. Okay. I'm going to put a light layer over this. Just like that. Not too much. Nice and even layer. i got a couple bubbles there. don't want that. Okay. And this stuff, you usually need to let it sit for about a minute or two, not quite as long as contact cement. And once that's all done, I'm going to start stretching layers of tool over it. Here you can see I put it on. I'm going to do one layer at a time. And in between each layer, I'm just going to roughly trim off the excess. And then I'm going to hit it with another spray of the Scotch Super 77 spray adhesive. I'm going to add a couple layers until I'm happy enough with it. All right, here it is after four layers. And once you get the mask on here and without much light going through it and your face being behind it, it should look pretty dark. If not, you can always go in later and add some on the inside. Okay, so next, I'm gonna take this inner shell out to the garage. I'm gonna let it dry for a few hours till this glue isn't so tacky. Make sure everything's stuck to it. And in the meantime, and then I'm going to move on to plasti dipping it. All right, so the mask sitting here in a box and have some black plasti dip. Now, when I'm plasti dipping this, I want to put a little in the nose, chin, jaw area. Where I don't want to put it is in all this area in between the nose and the chin and the nose and the forehead. That's where we're going to be looking out of and talking out of. When you put plasti dip on tool, it tends to gunk up and it's going to make it solid. All right, I'm just going to. Apply this nice and thin. I was saying just on the edges. Okay, I'm going to go all the way around the mask like that. Okay, unfortunately the glue is lifting a little on the edges, but that's okay. Let's go back and reattach it later. Now I'm using a little bit of black lacquer. Just to help paint off the nose and Make it a little more opaque in here, but it's not as thick as a plastic dip and won't block out your vision. Okay, so I did have to actually go through and restick some of this right before the plastic dip and the paint completely dried. I don't know if I just didn't let the adhesive sit long enough or if there's chemicals. Most likely, there's probably some chemicals in the plastic dip that cause this to loosen up. But I've got everything restuck down and I'm going to give it one more. Quick coat of the black lacquer just to add a little bit more opaqueness. To the mesh areas where your mouth and your eyes are, so it's a little bit darker without having to add further layers of tool. 
and do more excessive work. Next, took a piece of computer paper, folded it in half, and drew basically one side of what is going to be the piece that goes in the center here. I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. And it looks like that when it's unfolded. And this is going to be the bottom piece that's going to go here. And I made this a little longer because I'm going to cut either side a section out and kind of fold this under so it looks like it's going into the mask. And this is going to stick slightly off the top here to attach to the top part of the hood. Right, I trace my pattern onto some 3 millimeter EVA foam. I cut it out and then I tr folded the pattern back together, trimmed off some excess, I made a new slightly smaller pattern that's going to sit in the center here. This. Okay, and then I use this little rivet thing to cut a circle into this. I'm going to heat this circle so that it expands up. And I'm going to cut some detail lines along these edges here. I'm going to press the center part in just with the nozzle of the hot glue gun to give it a little bit of definition. Okay, I've heated these and next I'm going to start gluing them on to here, starting with the bottom piece of course and then the top and you can see here I've put in some of the detail with the hot glue gun tip to give it that center piece. For the raised circular area here, I'm actually going to use an upholstery tack that I have lying around. I'm going to press right through in the center. After, of course, I glue all this on. Okay, I've cut out a little slot here, and I've traced out where I'm going to apply my contact cement. And the slot, so this can fold in and kind of run into the mask itself whenever I glue it on. Right, here it is all glued on. Uh, I know I said I was going to put an upholstery tack in the middle of that, but I actually ran out of them. <laughs> I just got an empty box. So I actually just put an, a dot of hot glue on a stainless steel countertop, and I'm just going to peel that off and then glue it right in the middle there. Right, I've got my little circular dot of hot glue glued on it since I couldn't find a carpet tack. And before I go ahead and plastic up all this, I'm going to take a brush and some Mod Podge and uh, seal up all this foam here. And part of the reason I'm doing that prior to plastic dipping is EVA foam is very absorbent. And I, in all honesty, don't want it to come out uneven, and sometimes it can kind of bubble up and get little divots and dents. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a couple coats of Mod Podge and let it dry in between the coats. Then we'll move on to pla the plastic dipping again. And I'm going to put a nice light coat on this one to be real even. And I let the Mod Podge dry. And I'm just going to go ahead and just start spraying it on. One nice thin coat. If I feel so inclined, I will do a second. Okay, it's nice and even. Always make sure to shake your can in between. Alright, now that's all sprayed up, I'm going to let that sit and dry. And once it's dry, I'm going to come back and spray paint this all white and then paint this centerpiece by hand. Alright, I have some Valspar Project Perfect Paint and Primer Flat White. And I'm going to use that. And as you can kind of see, maybe I'm focusing more so on areas like here to get it totally white, and here to not. It looks like I smudged it. Yeah, totally right there. Maybe a little definition and shadow. Some of these other areas. Kind of looks like that. Maybe a little bit of the black showing through. There you 
have it. Right, I let this sit and dry. And next, I thought I had a dowel rod. Apparently, I don't. I got this piece of scrap plastic. Next, I'm going to glue this to the top and level it out. I'm going to cut it to the length that I want because this is going to act as a support for the fabric. It's going to be coming off the hood here. And I'm just going to be loosely basing, of course, all this off this reference photo. All right, I've measured out the length here that I wanted for this. And I went ahead and marked the center. I'm going to glue this on. And I just took a pair of scissors. And I cut a little notch in here right where I want it to sit. And that's where I'm going to glue it in. I'm going to reinforce it with a little hot glue on each side too once I contact cement it in. All right, I'm going to take my hot glue gun and add a little hot glue around here to help and give it a little support as the hot glue cools. It's going to harden and help hold this in place. And I've already contact cemented it. Of course, I have not attached this yet. This won't be going on till the end, but yeah. There's the support. I'm going to put a little more of this on the back, let that cool. All right, so to build the piece that goes up here, which is going to be made out of some cloth, I'm using some black craft fabric. I just had this laying around. I picked it up because it was $1.99 a yard and has a pretty cool texture to it. And use bits and pieces of it on my Kylo Ren costume. But you can see here, I just took the corner of it and I cut it kind of at an angle here. So I had this triangle piece. And then I took the triangular piece. And all I did was put some folds in it. Then I contact cement the folds together. And you end up with a piece that looks like this. Okay. And if you'll notice, this hood kind of comes down like this. It has these ridges or whatever coming off of it. And I have another piece over here that I've already contact cemented. And I'm going to contact cement it onto here. And then trim it where I need to and start gluing it to this part of the mask. Alright, so like I say, I just kind of rough cut this and didn't really have a pattern. I'm just going to trim off the excess. I went ahead and contact cemented this to the top. And... You can see here what it looks like with the mask. I'm going to position this underneath it and I'm going to start gluing it in. And I'm going to trim off any excess just where it comes in the eye part here because I want to be able to see fully. But the other excess at the top up here doesn't really matter. It's going to be all covered. All right, and I've attached this side. And with the mask on here. You can start to see it get a shape. Uh, you look at the reference photo. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. Right now I've attached both sides to it. And once I glue the mask on, it's going to look something like that. As you can see, it's starting to get the shape from the hood. And next, I'm going to paint this center part here based off the reference photo with some acrylic craft paint. All right, so looking at my reference photo, this kind of has an undercolor of black. So I'm going to start off with some folk art metallic black paint. It's actually sequin, sequin black. And that's going to be my base coat. And once I'm done applying a couple layers of this, make sure that it's nice and semi-dark. And you see as it's going on, it doesn't, especially with the white being the undercoat, it's going to take a couple layers of this. But once I get it black, I'm going to move on to some gold colors. All right, I've given it the second coat of black acrylic. And it's not 100% black, but it's even. And I don't really want 100% black since I'm going to dry brush all the gold onto it anyways. Right now this has had full time to dry. I'm going to go ahead and do some dry brushing. 
and I'm using Deco Art Metallic Paint, and the color is Champagne Gold. And for the dry brushing, I just get a little bit of paint on the end of my brush, and then I take a paper towel or something, and just kind of rub off most of the excess. And then I'm looking at my reference photo, there are certain areas I'm going to apply a little more to than others. But yeah, I'm just going to go through and repeat this process until I get the desired effect. You can see here the dry brushing is very subtle. There's a lot of black showing through. And here it is all finished. Set it a little heavier here towards the bottom and in the center piece and here in the center at the top and on the edges and some parts here in the middle are still left pretty black. All right, now that uh, this is pretty much dry and ready to go, I'm going to start piecing some other stuff together before I go ahead and glue the actual face mask on. And for this, I had some excess pleather. It's cloth on one side and textured on the other. I just had this laying around from a Batman cape that I made. And I also took a pretty decent sized strip of it. And that's going to act as the rest of the hood. For the front piece here, I just took a little hot glue and like folded this over and glued it. But first, I'm going to put this piece on here that I cut out of the pleather to cover some of this up. And also so that I have more of a look that this is attaching directly into the hood itself. And I saved the elastic strap from the mask. And I'm going to use my hot glue gun. I'm going to glue that inside the mask before I finish gluing on the hood itself. Alright, so next I'm going to take this piece of pleather, say for the edge and glued it here. And I took a paint marker and marked where the center of it is. Because I'm going to glue this edge here onto this top here. Just along the top. I'm not gluing it on the sides, just along the top. Right, I glued this on and I used contact cement. And since I really wanted this to stick well, I put a couple layers on each side. I put down one and let it set for 15 minutes and another, and then let it set for 15 minutes and a third. So it took 45 minutes total to wait till I could glue this together. But now that this is glued together, I'm going to use some hot glue on the points where this makes contact. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that on. Alright, now that my mask is all glued together, I'm going to do some of the final details. And you can see here, I'm just drawing this on with a Sharpie, and now I'm just coloring it in. Uh, I'm, I'm not just going to leave it with a Sharpie, though. I'm going to go through and paint over this. It's just that I have a really, I'm not very steady with a paintbrush, or if you look close enough. I'm not all that steady with a marker, either. But I can get a much straighter line with a pen or a pencil or a marker than I can with uh, a paintbrush. And part of the reason that I didn't just mask this off and spray it red is because most likely the masking tape will take off the plastidip and the paint. So yeah, you don't have to do this. You can paint it on, you can draw it on, you can do whatever you want. But yeah, I'm going to draw both sides of the Sharpie, then I'm going to go back through with some acrylic paint and paint it. Alright, now that it's all sharpied up, it doesn't look bad per se, but you can tell, at least I can tell, that this was done with a sharpie, so I'm going to use some dark red acrylic craft paint. Get this at any hobby store, or if you just happen to have whatever red lying around, or like I say, you can skip this, or airbrush it, or do whatever. I'm going to go ahead and start adding a layer over this to help it be a little bit more even and consistent. It's also going to give it a nice textured layered look. I like using multimedia, especially for things like this, because it does come out looking so good. I'm 
So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and you can already see how much, how much better it looks where I put it. I'm going to go ahead and do that on both sides. And this one I finished painting, just to give you a kind of a side-by-side -side comparison versus this one. You can see, still see all the streaks and lines and stuff in it. All right, so it's all done. And like I say, the hood is just a strip of cloth, strip of the pleather here. And yeah, in and of itself it doesn't do much, but I'm going to go ahead and put this on the mannequin head. And how this basically works is on each end here, on the underside on this one, I glued a piece of Velcro. And on this other side, I glue it on the top, the other adjacent piece of Velcro. And how this works is, basically you're going to put this on your head, and you wrap this part around your neck, and this side, same thing. And then once you put this around your neck, it Velcros in the back, and then you can kind of tease out and shape your hood. And just to give you an idea, I'm going to go ahead and put this on. All right, so yeah, here it is. So I'm going to how it looks, how the hood looks. Like I said, I just crisscross these sides, Velcro on the back. Just give me a second in front of the mirror just to kind of get this, you know, even in place the way I wanted it. But yeah, I'm really happy with the way this turned out and the fact that I don't have to paint my face. Little or something uncomfortable and unbreathable. And I hope this inspired you guys to make your own version of this. And I hope this video was helpful. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.